topology optimization. We understand what a topology is, we know optimization, but what does topology optimization stand for? How is topology optimization related to modeling? And how is it related to design? These are some of the questions we are going to answer in today's lecture. Let me start with this beautiful design by Johannes Naumann back in 2006. This chair is very elegant. It is very different from the chairs around us. These legs, it looks like they grow from ground, open the arms or open the branches to support the seat and the back. Imagine as a person sitting on a chair, applying gravity to the seat and pushing backwards. So these legs are designed by using topology optimization to support this mechanical load. It is designed by topology optimization, which is an iterative process. Let's have a look how this shape evolves during the iterative optimization process. It starts from this solid block, and here we could observe there's a seat and the back, and these two parts are not allowed to be changed during the optimization. And on the ground, there are three points fixed, indicating where the legs will grow from. So let's have a look at this animation. This optimization process is an iterative process. During these iterations, the material that is not relevant for this mechanical load is automatically removed. This process is very similar to how our bone reacts to mechanical load. Because of this natural adaptation process, what remains is a very elegant structure to support the mechanical load in the best way. This skeleton looks visually comparable to the bone, and also the, prin the principle behind the design of this chair is similar to the bone adaptation, and this gives the name the bone chair. We have a design, and each design we would consider fabrication. Back in 2006, 3D printing is not as mature as of today. Uh, it is called rapid prototyping. Uh, what the designers did was to fabricate a mold by using rapid prototyping. It is composed of multiple pieces. By casting aluminum into the mold, they get eventually get a polished design as shown here. So this is an iconic design of topology optimization. It is exhibited at a, a multiple industry design museums around the world. The chair is just one of the examples of topology optimization. And topology optimization is mostly relevant for aerospace and automotive industry. And there, people strive to reduce the weight of mechanical parts. Uh, for instance, on the left-hand side, you see a bracket in an airplane. By using topology optimization, the mechanical weight is reduced significantly while not sacrificing the mechanical performance. In the middle, it shows topology optimization applied to design a uh, motorcycle frame. It looks elegant. Uh, it is fabricated by 3D printing. And on the right-hand side, uh, it is Qatar Convention Center. Topology optimization creates beautiful organic shapes. And this is very much appreciated in art and in architecture. And that's the reason people uh, apply to policy optimization to design support structures for Qatar Convention Center show on the right-hand side. It is a giant structure. It has uh, a length of about 260 meters and a height of 30 meters. Talking about topology optimization, uh, we would like to distinguish other optimization uh, classes. Normally, we distinguish between sizing, shape optimization, and topology optimization. Let's say we have a rectangular component. We want to optimize it for some purpose. Uh, you could optimize the dimension. You, for instance, you make it longer, you make it shorter, and this is called sizing. So you modify the size of the component. 
what relatively you can modify the outer geometry as shown in the middle so you modify the boundary and make it curved and this is called shape optimization topology optimization is different from sizing and shape optimization um, mostly on the aspect that the topology is modified so on the right hand side with topology optimization for instance after optimization you get three holes in the geometry the topology in 2d basically considers whether how many holes you have in a domain so in this case the topology is changed and to differentiate from sizing and shape optimization we call it topology optimization To explain the principles behind topology optimization, I would like to introduce this new, this uh, simple toy problem. Almost everybody has played with Lego blocks. Uh, normally, we are given a limited amount of resources, and we want to make the best use of it. Consider we want to build a structure in a design domain, uh, which has a dimension 10 by 20. So if we want to build a solid structure, we need 200 Lego blocks. And we want to find a structure such that when a force is applied on the right-hand side in the middle downwards, we want to find a structure that has the minimum amount of deform deformation. Or in other words, we want to find the stiffest structure. So if we have 200 blocks, that's very easy. We just make the entire structure solid. But now we don't have as many as we want. Suppose we have only 60. We have to place these 60 blocks in a very clever way such that when a force is applied, the deformation is small or the stiffness is very high. And this is what we want to find out. So we have 60 blocks. We place it within 200 empty places. By calculation, we can find out we have 10 to the power of 51 possible solutions. This is a huge number. In China, when we talk about a big number, a countless number, we say it's just like the stars in the universe. The stars in the universe, by estimation, the number is about 10 to the power of 24, which is far less than the possibilities here. In fact, I have just checked the number of, if we consider the entire Earth, the mass would be composed of 10 to the power of 51 um, protons and the neurons. So all these atoms added together is 10 to the power of 51, which is the same size of our problem. This essentially tells us it is not possible to test every design. So uh, I illustrate three possible solutions. Here we have 60 blocks. Uh, we divide it by 20, so we have three solid rows. Let's call it design A. You might think on the left hand side, it is more important for supporting the node, so we place more blocks to the left. Let's call it design B. You might place it randomly by doing some tricks or black magic, and you come up with design C. Uh, if we increase the resolution to make a continuum structure, it looks something like this. Now, think about it. If a force is applied pointing downwards on the right hand side, which structure has the smallest deformation? Or which structure is the stiffest? We could fabricate this geometry, do mechanical tests. We could also do mechanical tests in a computer by using finite element analysis, which we have explained in our last lecture. So this shows the finite element analysis result. If we superimpose the reference geometry, we could observe the design C has the least amount of deformation, which is almost invisible in this case. So let's have a look at this animation telling us how this shape is found by this optimization process. In this optimization process, it looks like the material is propagating from some region to another region as the material concentrates to 
form a solid structure, the deformation becomes smaller and smaller. I'll play this. I'll place this animation again. I'll play this animation again. Uh, please pay attention to the first few iterations. In the first few iterations, uh, the deformation is big, also the change of deformation is more visible. Okay, so now I will play it again. We are dealing with an optimization problem, which means we would like to minimize something where we want to maximize something.